Okay, chapter four will also be fairly short compared to some other chapters. Here we're gonna talk about leadership coaching. And here we'll talk about a framework for coaching, principles of coaching, coaching in a global environment, and then we'll wrap up with a few quotes. Leadership quote, uh, coaching uses the relationship between the coach and the coachee as a platform for questioning assumptions, stimulating reflection, creating and expanding options, and growing perspectives. So understand this. The relationship allows the coach to question assumptions, to stimulate reflection, to create or expand options in the coachee, and to help the coachee grow perspectives. But it's the relationship that does, that's the cause here. Now, it doesn't have to be a formal coach. It could be a mentor. It could be um, somebody else that you're just depending on. It's the Obi-Wan, Luke Skywalker kind of relationship. A framework for coaching includes relationship, assessment, challenge, support, and results. So again, we have assessment, we have challenge, we have support, and these bring results in the context of this overall relationship that is supportive and, and trusting. Challenges create disequilibrium. Now, that's important because when you have a challenge, it, it, it causes you to, to dig down deep into something else because there's an imbalance between current skills and demands that call for people to move out of their comfort zone to something else. Coaches also create disequilibrium because uh, they are um, poking and prodding and, and questioning and trying to help the coachee become more. So the coachee uh, is, is experienced the coach as kind of a challenge, but a trustworthy, um, reliable source of that challenge. Someone that you can trust. Support, effective coaching always moves toward goals, toward goals. We've got to understand they're, they're moving the right direction down the field. Okay. Now, these goals that are measurable and contribute to individual or organizational performance. So you have to be moving toward goals and it has to be something useful, not just that you're gonna eat another bag of potato chips tonight, but that you're actually going to grow and improve in something meaningful. A prerequisite for developing as a leader is to know one's strengths and developmental areas. Okay, to know one's strengths. Remember that first quote that we started with, to know oneself? Okay, now this is interesting because I, I remember back in the um, Obama-McCain uh, election, there was this uh, commentator said something like, well, you know, something about John McCain is that he sure is comfortable in his own skin. And I thought, you know, that's interesting. I know of no world-class leader that, is, that does not know their own strengths really well. This is, just, this is fundamental to leadership. Now, but now here's, here's the thing. Imagine if McCain was trying to be cool like Obama. How would that work? It would be awful. I mean, he, he's just not a cool kind of guy. Now imagine Obama trying to be a hard case like McCain. That would fall just as flat. But each man knew themselves and they were playing to their own strengths and that's what is necessary uh, as a leader. Okay, so principles of coaching. Principle one, creating an envir a learning environment. That's important. You have to be able to have this context where you're able to really sit down and hash out these learning ideas. Uh, principle two, the coach needs to ensure the coachee's ownership. Just like you're responsible for the material that you're learning in this class, the coachee has to take a responsibility. It's not the coach's responsibility to make sure that the coachee learns. The coachee has to take that and be, uh, not only does he have to be empowered to do it, but he has to take that responsibility himself. Facilitate and collaborate. So the coachee is trying to help the coach, uh, the coach is trying to help the coachee um, take that ownership and he's collaborating with him, working with him, trying to poke and prod and help him along. Uh, advocating self-awareness, that is knowing yourself, knowing your own strengths, and then promoting a sustainable learning from experience, that is long-term. And then finally, modeling what you coach, that is that you can't be saying one thing and doing another because, you know, if you believe, um, you believe what you see, not what you, what somebody says. So uh, you have to be doing all of these kinds of things if you're going to be an effective coach or to learn from an effective coach. Okay, coaching in the global environment, here's another reminder that, again, U.S. culture is individualistic. It's egalitarian. It's performance-driven. It's comfortable with change and action-oriented, but other cultures may not be, so you have to be careful with that. Again, it's just another caveat. They put these in many of these chapters. We have found that the basic components of the framework, they say on page 131 to 132, relations, or, sorry, relationship, assessment, challenge, support and results are applicable in our work with leaders around the world. 
However, the manifestation or the expression of these components often requires different forms in different cultures. So you're going to have these key variables, relationship, assessment, challenge, support, and results in pretty much any kind of coaching context, but how it's done is going to be different. In some countries, they're, they're very authoritarian and, and top-down the way that they do things. In other countries, and so I'm thinking like former Soviet Union kind of countries. In other countries like uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, those kind of countries, they're very democratic in the way that they operate, that's fine, but they're still going to operate in terms of relationship, assessment, challenge, support, and results. Coaches who are not familiar with the business model, strategy, key players, and culture of the organization are seen to be significantly limited in their effectiveness. So uh, when you're selecting a coach, somebody who understands your situation, not just as a good coach, all-purpose coach, but somebody who specifically understands your issues or your field may be a better fit. And then finally, um, foundational elements in coaching success include a trusting relationship, the balancing of assessment, challenge, and support, and the pursuit of measurable goals. This is just another way that they summarized what we've already said. Okay, so this was a very quick lecture. Uh, there's not much more here, but uh, to understand what it needs to, what it means to be an effective coach, just go back and, and understand those few pieces of the puzzle, and you'll have it. Thank you for your time, and we'll talk to you in chapter five.